Hi everyone. As you can hear, my pressure regulator is clicking quite rapidly. So it's time for accumulator sphere replacement. These are the tools I'll be using for this job. And I have two spheres to replace, but more on that in a moment. For sphere removal I have these two tools and I usually prefer the chain wrench on the right, but sometimes there's not enough space for it. I always recommend spheres made by IFHS, because they are the OEM brand. Spheres usually have production date written on them. My tip is to buy your spheres from a Citroën specialist, because if you buy them from a regular car parts store, they could be really old and might not last as long. I also like to put a date on the spheres so I know when I replace them. Now I'm going to show you very quickly how to remove the accumulator sphere if your Citroen does not have the brake accumulator. And it goes something like this. Put your car on axle stands, release the hydraulic pressure, fit the sphere tool, undo the sphere, Remove the old o-ring, loop the new o-ring with LHM and fit it. Fit the new sphere and tighten it by hand and you're done. Thanks for watching. And now when the DS was introduced, they had an additional accumulator for the front brakes to give backup pressure to the front brakes in an emergency situation. SMs had the same setup, but I want to point out that not all D models have this setup and I'm not going to explain why that is in this video. When the CX came along, it didn't even have a brake accumulator, because it didn't even have power steering when the car was launched. But that changed in 1976, when the CX finally got the Diravi, and once again there was a need for the brake accumulator. And the same setup was used on the XMs that had the Diravi steering. So basically, the brake accumulator is needed in a pressure-hungry system to isolate the power steering in an emergency and to provide pressure for the front brakes. And to cut corners even more, cars with the Diras never had brake accumulator, because the FDV valve is designed to drop power steering first if the pressure gets too low. And let's not even talk about the later 6 plus 2 piston pump setup. My first attempt was to replace the main accumulator first, but it turns out that on an automatic V6 flavored XM, you can't get this sphere out without removing the brake sphere first, and that's fine because I highly recommend replacing these at the same time. So the first step is to remove these three hydraulic lines. Before removing any piping, the area must be cleaned. You have to remove the entire unit because you can't replace the brake sphere in place because you can bend or break hydraulic lines. The hydraulic lines are usually a bit stuck, but gentle wiggle and pulling will help to remove them. I usually like to use a ring spanner like this to loosen the flare nuts, because this way it rarely slips.
The unit itself is held in place by three bolts and this process is basically the same with the CX, but keep in mind that there will be some small differences. Now that the brake sphere is finally out, the main accumulator can be replaced. I already showed a speed run of how to remove the sphere, so I'm not going to show it again. And because this video is already going to be longer than I expected. I like to block the outlets with bolts to prevent any dirt getting in. Now the units can be removed from the shield by loosening the clamp and unscrewing the two bolts on the back. Judging how dirty and rusty the shield and sphere are, it seems they have been there for a while. The first row of numbers indicate the part number of the sphere, while the second row indicates the date code. So the first number indicates the year and the last three numbers indicates the day. So that means that this sphere was made in 1st of October year 2000. The procedure is the same as with the main accumulator. Remove the sphere, give a quick clean to the sphere leg, oil up the new seal and place it in the groove. Tighten the new sphere by using a five finger technique. After the shield is cleaned, the new sphere and the leg can be fitted back. Like always, I like to give a coat of anti-seas to the bolts and clamps. And now the brake accumulator can be fitted back to the car. I'm going to spare you from most of the reassembly, because it goes as Haynes says. Sometimes, if not most of the times, getting the hydraulic lines to sit properly can be tricky and it requires a lot of patience. And Citron says, Whenever a pipe seal is disturbed, it must always be replaced with a new one. But that's not necessary and they rarely fail. But of course, check the condition of the seals as you don't want any rubber savings into the system. At some point I'm planning to make a video where I demonstrate my methods for removing and installing hydraulic lines and how I like to handle issues like stuck or rounded flare nuts. Once everything is back together, it's time to bleed the system. I usually like to let the car idle for a bit at the lowest setting with the bleed screw open. While the car is idling at the lowest position, I go and set the car to the normal height and close the bleed screw.
The hydraulic system is self-bleeding and it means that you could set the car to the normal height and close the bleed screw and start it up, but I like to do it this way. After confirming that there are no catastrophic hydraulic leaks, we can top up the LHM. Now let's count the time between the regulator clicks. Ideally, there should be more than 30 seconds between the regulator clicks. Some say they have more than 2 minutes between the clicks, but I have never owned a Citroën like that. Forty seven seconds. I'll take that. Thanks for watching.